Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, oh, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Hey, everybody! Welcome to another Tuesdays with Stories. Ooh. I am Joe List. Hey, hey, Mark Norman here. And we're both here. We're both queer. We're both gay. We're both homosexual. And we're both fat. And we both have dicks. That's true. Yeah. Uh, not well, a fat some of it. dick, though. No, can you have a fat dick? Oh, oh that's yeah. an interesting question. Oh, Do yeah. they get the dicks get fat? No, it? it's weird. It's the only part of your body that doesn't gain weight, and you work it out. It doesn't gain muscle. Well, it can't be the only part of your body. Well, like your nose doesn't gain weight, does it? Uh, what about a gin bloss? What's that mean? That's when the you, band. Well, that's what that's from. Is when your nose gets all big from drinking. It's called a gin blossom. Oh, is that right? That's right. W. I had C. no Fields, idea. Baby. Yeah, well, I thought there was another name for that though, called. Uh, there's something else for that name for that. Mm, clown nose, the Boston proper. Because I've never heard that before, but Honker, I've heard. Schnoz, what Jewish. do you call it? Isn't there another word for that? I don't know it. Call in. Gin blossom. That makes sense. I thought there was another word. I'm on airplane mode over here. We need Shelby to plug something in. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I've, I've never heard. Maybe there's another Drinker's one. Drinker's nose. It's oh. all red and fat and puffy. Rudolph. Like a Ralphie May kind of thing. Fuck. I thought there was something else to that. Vein nose. Vein nose. Mm. Um. There's bow nose baseball. Oh, yeah. You remember, remember that? Bo? Yeah. Bono's baseball, Bono's football. I pulled that out of my ass since 88. Hold on. You keep talking. I want to look this up because I thought there was another term I can remember. It was a real run of those sports guys. Uh, remember that Pro Stars cartoon? It was like Bo Jackson, yes. Michael Jordan, I think, and, and Wayne, Wayne Gretzky, Gretzky which they yes. had to throw the honky in, I think, just to be nice. And so kids would watch. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But uh, yeah, they would go. They'd be like a bank robbery, and Wayne Gretzky would hit the guy with a puck. Yeah, and yeah. Then, uh, uh, Michael Jordan would dunk the bag of money into the car. I don't know, but there was always something. Yeah, and then Bo would Bo would just break, break his hip, their, I guess. Break their neck. Yeah. Rhinophyma. That ain't it. That's what it's called. It's a condition causing development of a large bulbous nose. Uh, maybe bulbous is what I was thinking. Well, Associated with granulomatous infiltration, commonly due to untreated rosacea. I don't oh, know. If I'm this talking is it. boozy here. Well, that's what it, I pulled up. It's called. Uh, it came up drunk nose. It's got some photos of some oh, Dan wow. Saint Germain <laughs> and uh, Nikki Glaser here. <laughs> I thought uh, there was another name. Uh, Alcoholic nose. Wow, well, that's a little on the nose. <laughs> Why do old men have big red noses? Rhino Fima. <laughs> Alcoholic's nose. Santa had one. Yeah, he kind of does. Yeah, He's probably boozing up he, there. He looks like an old drunk sea captain. He only works one day a year. He's got a bunch True. of midgets. He's got and, a sense of humor, it and seems that, like. That bourbon goes well in a nog. Yes. Egg. J-nog. Aha. Uh-huh. Or as David Tell calls it, elf cum. Yes. Eggnog. That That's a joke I would write and cross out. Yeah, but it works for him. It is. It's up his anal. Yeah. he's. Uh, well, that's the thing. There's a lot of stuff now that people have that you'd be like, like Carlin has a boatload that you're like, I would never do that. Oh, yeah. But he invented it. Exactly. The thing of, I mean, all those jokes about the sayings. Yes. The down the tubes right. and uh, lock up the key and throw away the key. Yeah. Where are you going to throw the key? It's right there. He's right. going to be able to get it. You're like, all right, George, take it easy. But at the time, I was like, I love this. I know. Well, it was amazing. But uh, it just, that's why I, we've talked about this before. I love this about comedy. It doesn't age well. You like that. I like that about comedy because it's got to be fresh. You watch, oh. like if my niece watched, you know, Seinfeld, she'd be like, what is this? It's just oh, Jews yeah. saying weird stuff. Right. And Wait, what's up with Jerry's hair? Exactly. That's what she says about her podcast. That's how I know she'd say it about Seinfeld. Uh. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they're right. But how cool must it be to invent the thing? Like the Marx Brothers, I think it's Duck Soup, where they do the mirror scene. Yes. Like, that was never done. Now it's been mocked in every commercial. Cartoons do it. Movies do it. Sure. They thought of that. Yeah, they were That's very insane. good. Yeah, they were top notch. They were, they were good. Lunch. Um, 
Anyways, I feel off. I, I went to the phone too quick. I started reading the phone. Oh, quick for the phone. It was a little... Well, we don't have a producer here anymore. We got no in-studio guy. Yeah, but let's get loose. I mean, when Shelby was staring at us, I, I had a trickle of sweat running down my ass crack because he's, he's so judgy. But it feels like Shelby's in the room because he listens it to the does. full episode, which we appreciate. He's God. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Well, maybe an, an angel, devil. I thought I used to think. Was there ever a period in your time, in your life, where you thought Santa was God? Whoa! Because oh, I thought God oh, and no. Santa were like the same guy. That's some Irish shit, <laughs> I think. Well, because they're both, uh, you know, invisible. Fat. They show up. They're up north. White. It's yeah. cloud. Like the beard. They both have that beard-looking ah, thing. Yeah. Okay, I get you with the beard. They give gifts, but God or Santa never puts you into hell. Or it gives you a coal. Yeah, coal's from oh, hell. Interesting. That I mean, if I was like had a choice between, are oh, you gonna spend eternity in hell or you're gonna get nothing for Christmas? Right. I'll take the eternity in hell. Yeah, I guess. I'm so. not afraid of hell. That's baloney. But oh. Christmas gifts would actually come. Yeah, you want the gift. I believed in Santa longer than I believed in God. Interesting. Because Santa, I would wake up and there'd be... Pre- By the way, I believed in Santa a very short period of time. Sure. But I would wake up and there would be As gifts evidence. that said, hey, love Santa. Right. You got there results. Would, I never saw a guy... <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> there was no one walking on water. By the way, why does God have a beard? Well, that's Jesus. Oh, no, wait. but you oh. see videos of God. He always has a big white beard, and he looks like... Oh, yeah, uh, that's a good point. And I'm like, everyone, the president can't have a beard. Police can't have beards. Right. The Yankees can't have beards. What's going on? You have a job interview. you got to shave the beard. I, I get it. I like where your head's at. I always thought that was weird about the judge is wearing a robe. I'm like, we call you your honor. You're up six feet ahead of me on top of a thing. you got a gavel, and you're in a robe? Yeah. What is that? He looks like he's getting a haircut. Yes, he does. <laughs> they should cut the judge's hair while he's judging. <laughs> and by the way, I thought this blew my mind. The judge doesn't even figure anything out. That's the people, the jury. Uh, the yeah. judge is just standing there going, all right, you go. That's enough yeah. from you. You go ahead. He's now. a ref. He's a ref, yes. Yes. That was too long. I don't accept that. That He should have a whistle. Fuck the gavel. Give him a... <laughs> I like that. Gavel's fun, though, because it yeah. feels, you know, whatever. That's true. And a whistle, that's for rape. What if it was a rape case and he's blowing the whistle? Wouldn't Ooh, that be ironic? Ooh, that would trigger something with the ladies. You might pass <laughs> out. You got something there. I think we got something with the judge. Judge is so pretentious. We got to call your honor and say, can I approach the bench? Like, who's this guy? And did you know this? He's just a guy. I remember my uncle saying that. The, there was a cop one time. We were going to the Whitman Hanson football game, and my uncle was driving his 66 Charger. Hell of a Ooh, ride. Wee, sweet uncle. Same car in the movie Big Fish. Ah. That's neither here nor there, but... We were pulling up, and then my uncle, the cop, was like, you got to put your blinker on. You got no blinker, or whatever. And my uncle was like, I got my blinker on. You just can't see it. Look at right there. Mm. And they started fighting. And I was like, what are you, crazy? That's a cop. Yeah. Maybe this is a white privilege thing. But uh, I was like, what are you, nuts? He's like, he's just a guy, right. and he's wrong. Ah. And I remember being like, oh, yeah, he's just a guy. Because at that True. point, I remember being like, a cops, well, they're, they're these high. Right. They're just, I mean, I appreciate the cops. I'm not an anti-cop guy. Uh-huh. I'm a pro-cop. Right. I'm a pro some cop and anti some cop. Yeah, I go on like a people. need to know basis. There you go, individual. Need to know didn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you call it? Per- people to people. Person man to person to basis. Yeah, man yeah. to man. That's a defense. Case by case. Case by there case. There we the, go. Rape murder case. was the case that they gave me. But yeah, suitcase. I, I, um, case bank. Uh, <laughs> case <the> closed. <laughs> All right. Not the best. So, but I remember thinking, oh, that's a good point. They're just people. They're just people. They just applied for a job and took a test or whatever. That's true. And they probably couldn't get other gigs. And cops, you know, it's a respectable gig when you ha- you don't have to have any skills. Right. Which I'm not shitting on the, the, the men in blue. They love the blues. Yes. St. Louis blues. Ah. Uh-huh. <laughs> blue Jays, uh, Toronto. But <laughs> my point is, I, I like where your, your uncle's head is at, but the guy has a gun. He is yes, just a man, but he's holding a, a Glock. Well, that's what I think. Like this is about blinkers, and he's the guy's yelling at him. And I think for the most part, you're like, no, no, it is on. Like it's a weird old. I can't remember exactly what the argument was, but it was a, because the car is old, or so, it's like a, a blinkers in a weird spot or right. some shit. He's like, you can see it right here. So the cop had to be like. All right, all right. Well, what the fuck? You can say fuck you, but I don't think he's gonna get shot. Yes, yes. I think a lot of these. I mean, this is we're getting into dangerous territory. Because there was a shooting again yesterday. A cop shot some lady that was in her house through the window. I don't know what the fuck went on there. Mm. But a lot of these times where there's a shooting, there's a lot of like, fucking get your hands up, you son of a bitch. And uh, someone's 
doing something. I'm not saying they deserve it, but something's happened. It's not usually like a, hey, you need to have your blinker on. My blinker is on. Right. Fuck you. Right. Like, that doesn't right. usually happen That's that way. That's a good point. Now, again, my white uncle privilege. is a white man. Yes. So, but even these uh, racial cases, I don't think it, most of them, I can't think of one where they're like, oh, you didn't have your seatbelt on. No, no, it's on. And then they, right, right, it's right. It's usually Yo. some kind of... Uh, Escalation or whatever. Is this Dale? I don't think we're supposed to be talking about this. Oh, shit. Uh, this is Michael Bryan. I think Dale would just show his dick. <laughs> and they'd be like, whoa. Yeah, well, that's a turn signal. And, he, and he's a fireman. The fireman and the cops, ah, they all help each other out. That's true. That's Professional true. Professional courtesy, they call it. Yes. It's it's kind of like uh, stand up. I was going to say improvisers, but no. I don't know if there's a bond there. No. Some cross both lines. That's like a bisexual. Improv is one letter away from improve. Hedberg. Is that his? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, he said, I bombed last night, and uh, they put the E up on the wall or something like that. Oh, well, that's not the insult. It's like a different Oh, okay. One. But well, anyways, anyway. I'm, I'm cool with the cops, and I'm cool with uh, improv people. Yeah, and blacks. Uh, blacks I'm, I'm very cool with. Yeah, I, uh, well, again, case by case. I don't yeah. want to hang out with Ike Turner. No, he might be dead. Is he dead? Is he dead? I don't know. Well, I hope he got beaten to death. Yeah. That would be a little medicine. Then he beats the rap. Uh-huh. I don't know. He beats uh, by Dre. Stink. Oh, uh, that was nice. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, some the co- I want one of, yeah, some cops are horrible and they just want to shoot people. That's another thing they're like, a cop shot a guy and you're like, yeah, he's probably crazy. Well, that too, probably wanted yeah. to murder people. He's got a gun. He's fucking. He wants to. I think if you have a job, we talked about this before. If you have a job where you get to carry a gun, you kind of want to shoot people. It's got to be in there a little bit. Military or cops, with all due respect to both those positions, but yeah. I don't want to shoot anyone, so I'm either. not a cop or a military guy, right? I or would, a hunter or whatever. I think the dream, if you're going to go cop route, is the P.I. You know, mm. empty pizza boxes, Hawaiian shirt, mustache, maybe a trench coat. And you kind of go up and you got your notepad and you go, all right, lady, what would you see? And she goes, I saw a fucking Jew coming in here and he had a, 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 a crowbar and a big nose. And you're like, all right, I got it. And then you go to the next guy and like, oh. Oh, he saw a Jew, too, but it was at 10 o'clock, and you start doing the, the math. Right. That seems fun. Or you could be an investigative journalist. Aha! Uh-huh. Similar. P-I-I-J. <laughs> um, Wait, what do they do? An investigative, just same thing, but then they write an article instead oh. of being like, here's the papers, uh, here's the photos of your dad fucking your aunt. Right, right. Yeah, They're like, here's an article about your dad fucking your aunt. They got, yeah, at least they got a little uh, creativity involved. They put their own spin on the on the words. Yeah, there. they spin it up, but I'm, uh, I'm afraid everyone's mad at me right now. Ah, uh, no one's so, mad. They're mad at me. I said a Jew joke. So we better move on here. Yeah, all right, moving. But, uh, yeah, case by case. Thank you. Really love that. I'm sure that'll be the title, Shelbo. <laughs> oh, we can do better than that. That's yeah, that yeah. that stinks. Yeah. Titular. That was fun as a kid. Yeah, he's the titular role. Oh. Remember that? Dolly Parton, titular. No, I don't really remember that. Oh, I remember right. uh, like the TV or like a video game, it would say height, weight, sex. Oh. Male or female. And I would be like, whoa. That's a good point. Sex. That's a good one time. Me and my uh, parents aren't really that. We're like coworkers, so like no birds and the bees. No, I don't curse around my parents. It's just a weird, unwritten thing. No birds and the bees, and no Fs or Cs. Yes, there you go. Uh, <laughs> and uh, one time it. I was playing a video game with my friend, and he said the word aphrodisiac, and I was like, my mom was like, you know, polishing or something, and I was like, mom, what is aphrodisiac? And she was like. Ugh. Because she had to tell me, because I just put her on the spot, ah. and she goes, "That's when you're uh, something turns you on sexually, or whatever it was." I can't remember the answer, and I remember being like, "Ah, oh, shit, I didn't know that." Now I'm we now it's weird in here, and we're playing the video game. There must have been in the '70s a lot of aphrodisiac oh! jokes. Oh, write it down. I like your hair. It's an aphrodisiac. Tweet it. Ah, uh, maybe I will. That's a great term for being into black guys. Yes, aphrodisiac. aphrodisiac. And a, a decent name for a black guy. Hey, my name's Afro Diziak. <laughs> All right. That's a stretch. But have you noticed they went away from the sex? They say gender now instead of sex. Uh-huh. Like there's no sex neutral. Uh-huh. Like when I was a kid, they'd say, what's the sex 
of the thing. Now they say, what's the gender? What's the difference? Well, I think there's so much gender talk now that you had to change it to gender because if you, it would be sex everything. Like, I'm uh, sex positive or I'm, gen- I'm sex... Right. Uh, Sex neutral. Neutral. That sounds weird. Sex neutral. It's sex politics. Yes. Sex fluid. No. Oh, ah. I got some of that in my balls. Yeah, me too. And sex politics. That's like, uh, you know, Clinton. Right. <laughs> oh, man. I'm fucking eating dicks over here. Hey, that's sex politics. Wait, what? Oh, I see. Uh, Lewinsky. I'm Damn blowing it. it. What she? So is she. <laughs> um, right, now we're doing Clinton jokes. What year is it? <laughs> OJ, Reaganomics. Ooh. Something D-O-O economics. Voodoo. I remember my dad dying at that scene in Ferris Bueller, and I was like, I don't really catch it. Yeah. Because he knew what voodoo economics was. But they don't need to know that for the punchline. I guess so. But to me, it was just a bunch <laughs> of kids sleeping, and I'm like, yeah, it's it's high school. Yeah. He's, he's like, ah, oh, these kids, that's what it was like. <laughs> like that was that guy. <laughs> Well, it is boring and fun. Yeah, he probably had a teacher that was similar. Right, he might have right. had Stein as a teacher. That guy wrote Nixon plays, speeches. Yeah, my dad would laugh at the weird. Uh, what, oh, I was watching The Sandlot as a kid, and there was a lot of screaming in The Sandlot. Like they'd be like, "The dog's coming!" Ah! Right. And they would all do that. And my dad was like, "Ah, the kids are screaming!" Ah! I was like, "This is what gets you." Come on. Wow, does he still does he laugh at you? No, really? It doesn't even. I'll I'll say things where you're like, "This will get him," and it just. Yeah, boy, that's really tough. There's it's nothing tough. worse in family, friends, podcast, obviously, or a stand-up show when you got a line. You're like, "This is uh, gonna be big," and then it just eats it. It eats it all day long. It's the worst, and you have to. It's like a. It's like when they pull out a trick play in a football game. It's like a 10-yard loss, and they're like, fuck, I was sitting on this all day. I really thought this was going to be something. Yeah, it's tough, man. And it brings you right back to childhood. You feel like you're six years old again. You feel like you're this big, and you're like, no one notices. And that's one thing about hanging out with comics, because we're all so funny that no one really laughs at each other a lot, unless it's like some horribly miscarriage joke or something. But then you go hang out with like uh, civilians, and you're zinging and zanging. Like, I bet you're hanging out with Derek, and you're murdering. Oh, it's unbelievable. There's times where I'm hanging out socially with regular people, and I'm like, this is unbelievable. I'm killed. But it has to be people or family. It has to be people that I know. Because when uh, I'm with strangers, this is what I think most of, the, most of my life is being consumed by meeting fans and hanging out with people. Yes. And they're like, he's not even trying to be funny. This sucks. Ah, uh, that's a good point. Like, it goes I, the other way. One time, I had a cigar with a Tuesday in Florida, and we hung out for like two hours because there was like a hockey game on. The cigar, you're stuck there. Right. You can't leave with a cigar. Yeah. I mean, you can, but you're not going to get in the car. You're not going to go inside. So we sat there for like two hours, and he was like, you know, I don't mean this offensively, but you're not very funny no. hanging out. Who is this? This is just a, a fan, a gay. Oh, he might right. not even be a gay anymore. We might have lost him. He might have converted to, you know. To straight. To something. Too straight. But I sat there. And I'm like, well, I'm watching a hockey game, and I'm having a cigar. Right. And it's after the show. I think he wants that thing to explode or something. you got to give him some kind of comedy. But I'm not that guy. I'm not like, I know. whoa, he took a slap shot like a like a mother on a Wednesday night in the Hollywood. <laughs> right. I, I don't have, I'm like, I got nothing. I'm just watching the game. I'm yeah. relaxing. I know. But- and I don't know you. Right. I'm uncomfortable. Right. I'm funny when I'm comfortable. Here, yes. there's an audience out there, but we don't have to think about them. We're just yes. sitting here being goofs. And I've noticed that if you let me be, it, something's gonna come. I'll fart. I'll I'll slip. I'll do something. But right. you gotta now. The pressure's on. Now I'm going. Oh shit! It's like somebody saying, "Be sexy right now." Right. Like, how the fuck do I be sexy? I don't know. But if you let me be sexy, maybe I'll get there. Yeah, you might be sexy. Maybe. You ever try to take a photo, and you're like, "I'm gonna be sexy in this photo," and then you look at the photo, and you just want to kill yourself. You're like, I got, oh, I got yeah. a buck tooth. My forehead's of crazy. Course. My Adam's apple's weird. My but dick is small. When it was snapping, you're like, that was. I could feel that was good. Yes. And then you see it later, and you're like, oh, I got three necks. I had that moment uh, a lot. Ugh, I hate myself. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm with you on the funny thing. And weird, it's the only business kind of like that. You know, like it's a singer. No one's like, you're not singing right now. Yeah, how come you're not singing? Yeah. How come you're not throwing a fastball? Right. Uh, we're at dinner. And we are funny guys. So it's he has a point because we can be funny off stage. Right. But you got to let it happen. Also, I'm like, I just did 50 minutes of right. jokes, and you get an hour of podcast every yes, week. Yes, yes. People are weird. We talk about it every week. It comes up. 
but the whole like uh uh oh these guys are introverted they're weirdos they're awkward they're socially insecure but they don't want to hang out but then that one guy's always like hey we should do something i'm like did you listen but right. i think they go oh well, not me he wants to hang out with me right i assume that's they just it's almost like the lottery like oh everybody's gonna lose but i'll win but I also get the opposite quite a bit, where sometimes I have twos gays that will just hand me like a, a fucking a plaque they made from hand of my mother being like, I made this for you. I thought you might like it. And then they just run away. Like, I'm sorry. I know you hate people. And I'm like, oh, no, yeah, no, come yeah. back. Come right. say hello. Right. Like some gays, they're too nervous. I'm taking a photo. They're shaking. And then they leave right away. They're like, I'm really sorry. I hate myself. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, no, I like you. Come say hello. Well, that's the trick. If you, you gays are listening out there, you want to meet the old stretchy balls here, just go up and go, I'm sorry. I hate myself. And you'll go, come back. And now you're in. Ah, that's not bad. But it's then leave bad. again. Then leave later. We had a guy in Appleton. He was just he was lingering for like an hour. Ooh, a lingerie. And uh, I thought he was going to shoot up the place. It was wild. Oh, wow. He was just kind of standing there. And he didn't stand in front. He kind of stood abreast, uh-huh. a jar. Appleby. Wait. Uh, a nail. Sex. Uh, he was just next to it, like shoulder to shoulder, facing this way. And yeah. I, like, like he was on the uh, meet and greet line. Uh-huh. I was like, what, what's going on here? Yeah. Very bizarre. Oh. Uh, that's what... Nice. Um, that was a good one. Fatty. But how about this? Forget because we got to get into some stories here. I don't oh, know what the geez, hell's going you're on. right. The Sorry, I forgot. Third over. I forgot about stories. But uh, that smells foul. Woo! <laughs> what is that? Oatmeal? I'm eating too much wheat. By the way, <laughs> that's a lot of wheat. I got two, two thoughts, uh, two things I want to say to some of the gays. First of all, speaking of gays bringing gifts, Seattle. A young kid who might have been 11. This was the youngest gay I've ever met in my life. Wow, that's a young gay. Yeah, I mean, he had placenta on his face. This kid was so young. <laughs> Gave me an autographed Eddie Vedder CD. Oh! He had an Eddie Vedder yeah. Into the Wild soundtrack autographed by Eddie. Oh! Dead center across the thing. Ah! And first, he came up. He looked. He's a nervous little rascal. I mean, sure. I'm talking, this kid, his, his mother was holding his hand. Oh, well, he's 11. He, he walks over. And he's he's very nervous. He's excited. He's like, "Hey, I got a gift for you." And he had it in his hand. He was moving his hand about, so I can kind of see the gift. Yes, which is always awkward. Yes, and I see it's like an Eddie Vedder CD. <laughs> and I thought he was gonna be one of these these putts puttses. What's the plural of putts? I think it's just like like moose, like share. No, wait, that's you don't not really right. Have multiple <laughs> shares. That's the beauty of shares. There's well, only one one of a kind. Well, if you're in stocks. Ah, uh, yeah, you yeah, shares. yeah. But um. <laughs> I meant to say deer. Did I say share? Oh, well, yeah. You've gone gay on us. <laughs> How'd you get to share? Oh, do you believe in uh, funny after love? Uh, uh, well, deer was putts. I thought it, there's, there's multiple putzes out there in my life, a couple, that will give you something. They're like, I know you like Pearl Jam, so I got you Vitology. <laughs> We're like, yeah, right. yeah, I have. I've oh, had this yeah. for 25 years. Like, <laughs> yeah. what are you talking about? You're That's nuts? cute, but yeah. It's cute. So I see the thing, and I'm like, oh, this poor kid. He's a retarded. He brought home a, a CD, and he's just going to give me a CD I've had for 20 years. No one even listens to CDs. What a weirdo. Yeah, but you got to be nice. And I'm, I'm being nice. I'm going, oh, wow, nice. How's fifth grade going? Nice to meet you. You seem sweet. Boners. I'll, I'll teach you how to shave <laughs> when it's time. <laughs> and he hands me the thing. He goes, I've had this. Ed, my, I go to the same school as Eddie Vedder's daughter, and I was like, Olivia? And he's like, you know her name? And I was like, I got some problems. Oh, yeah. Then he hands me the CD. He's like, it's autographed. I almost shit my pants. I, I came and shit twice wow. at the same time. My mind is blown. What it's is the he? best gift I've ever gotten in my entire life. I mean, no offense. He doesn't want it? That's what I said. I was like, is this yours? Do you have to keep it? He's like, no, no. He's like, you'll appreciate it more. He's oh, like, I see the guy. I know the guy. He's like a nice guy. Shit, sweet He kid. goes to school. I mean, he could. this guy could end up dating. He could be, Eddie Vedder could be his father-in-law. Right, Who knows? Right. He could sign pair of panties if he wanted. Wow. But I felt bad because I'm like, are you sure? Can I, I can have this? He's like, you take it. You, oh you appreciate him God. more. Because one time a guy, I forget the guy's name. I think he lives in Milwaukee or Madison. He gave me like a leather-bound limited edition Pearl Jam book, which I talked about on the show. Uh-huh. And another guy, might have been the same guy, gave me like guitar picks from Mike McCready or something. So I've gotten some crazy Pearl Jam you things. You have a jewel case at the house full of a per, uh, memorabilia. Paraphernalia I like too. All right. But anyways, he gave it to me. I almost started crying. Best gift I've ever got. I felt bad wow. for my wife because I'm like, this is the best gift I've ever got. Yeah. No offense. You're out, you know, sister. She got me a blender once. Oh, gross. <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, I want to say thank you to the young whippersnapper. I don't even know if he's old enough to listen, but uh, that's amazing. Thanks so much. And good-looking kid, I might add. Ah, Had some freckles. Ooh, I feel alive. Uh, but eh, that's not how it goes. Damn it. But um, anyways, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got myself an I'm autographed. Damn it. I got an autographed Eddie Vedder CD. I wish you weren't after <laughs> fucking up the lyrics. Uh, I got an autographed Eddie Vedder CD, so thank you, you young whippersnapper. I forget your name. I wrote it down somewhere. I don't know where it is. Cute kid. Hell of, Jeremy. Hell of a kid. Oh. That, that'll be something. Spokane. Hey, saved, folks. Saved it. Speaking of uh, exciting things. Yes. We got a really cool thing that this episode is brought to you by. Please support the people that support us. Here, here. Uh, this week's advertisement... Shit, cut uh, that. Cut that. This week, the show is brought to you by Native Deodorant. Woo-wee. Mark, are you looking for a natural deodorant? You got that right. Well, I know that making that change can be hard. Oh, you don't yeah. want to try something that doesn't work because then you'll stink. Even if it is all natural, you don't want to stink. Well, I have a great new sponsor to tell you about, folks. Native Deodorant. Yes. Native creates safe, simple, effective products, and Native has over 5,000, 8,000, excuse me, 8,000 five-star reviews. So you know it works. You know how hard it is to get a five-star review? They have 8,000 of them. This is a legit deodorant. You know about Native? Yeah, we've never got one five-star. Native deodorant doesn't contain aluminum, parabens, or talc. No talc. Wow, that's rare. It's filled with ingredients found in nature, coconut oil, tapioca starch, shea butter. It's good stuff. We got a stick. I'm wearing it right now. He's got some on his privates. Less is more with Native. They have fewer, simpler ingredients, and it's good stuff. I'm a big fan. You got to get one. I gave the lady the uh, the cucumber mint or whatever. She's uh, never been fresher, finally. <laughs> Plus, they got something for everybody. Lavender and rose, vanilla, you name it, coconut. I love it. Uh, so, yeah, you got to do it. Order yours now and see how it compares to your regular deodorant. There's no risk to try. Native has free shipping and free returns wow. in the U.S. For 20% off your first purchase, visit nativedeodorant.com and use code TUESDAYS during checkout. That's nativedeodorant.com. Use TUESDAYS, plural, during checkout. Take care of your body, folks. And yourself. Yes, you got to do that. All right, let's let's tell them about something that's happened in our lives here. Because oh yeah, well I, I do want to mention all. I want to give a shout out to all the love and the new gays we got, all the new people jumping on board. We had a bit of a spike, so thank you, and do you tell a friend, and we're glad to have you, and welcome aboard. Yes, choo choo, spike it, and stick around to the end and hear our dates. Come see us live for God's sakes. Yeah, we need you out there. I the, the, I did Rogan three weeks ago. And the f- the first two weekends after that sold out every show. Wow, unbelievable! Oklahoma City, we sold all Man. that out. Got to say thanks. We sold out Sacramento. That was amazing, and uh, just had a great week. And then Grandma died. Oh, dead I think, granny! I think I mentioned. Yeah, we talked about it quite a bit. Did we talk about the funeral? Not the funeral. All right, I'll just make it quick. Flew down. Felt like a good son by the way, because it was totally wrecking my week, but it's Grandma. Yeah, Grandma. And it's a big trip, so I had to cancel a bunch of shit. Flew down on a Wednesday to Baton Rouge, tiny airport. That's where she lived, uh, about an hour outside of New Orleans. Stayed in a Motel 12, piece of shit, hellhole. This is how bad the motel was. I just got a quick one because I was going to be there eight hours and out. Sure. They said, hey, there's a free breakfast from 6 to 10 or whatever. I go, great. I'll be up at Fucking seven, eating that shit. I get to the breakfast at like 7.20. I got to be out the door by 7.45. Just going to have a quick okay. nugget. It ran out. They ran out at 7.20. I've never heard. They started at 6. It goes 6 to 9, I think. What? And I was like, oh, I'm in the cushy middle, baby. They're going to be they're gonna be whining and dining with waffles and eggs and biscuits. Ran out of what? Everything? I mean, there was a couple cereals. There was a banana and a, and a plate of semen. It was done. There was <laughs> nothing there. So I was like, where's all the eggs? Because, you know, there's a hot plate. That's what you want. You want yes. that egg and the, the potato and the bacon and the sausage. You got to get a fresh egg, too. Oh, this was a placenta miscarriage abortion. Ugh. There was nothing left. The egg thing was gone. The sausage thing was gone. There was a couple of patats left. I threw them on the plate. They looked like mouse shit. Brutal. 
I've never heard of that in my life. The guy was like, yeah, once it's out, it's out. What? Like, That's insane. You got two two hours to go here, fatty. Yeah, I don't like this one bit. Yeah, all right. So I go to the funeral. It's weird. You see everybody. And now there's a weird thing with like show busy stuff. Because, you know, these are nice Louisiana God-fearing people. Right. And you just show up and they're like, tell us about Seinfeld and tell us about this. And who's your dad? And how do you how big's your dick? And all this. You're like, ah, it's weird. And but you try to get along and you make you make nice and I was, they made me a pallbearer. Oh, and, that's fun! Uh, I've never been a pallbearer. Oh, it's heavy. <laughs> How many pallbearers are there? There's three on each side. Six. Yes. Yeah, so she was a you know a little old lady. So it wasn't it wasn't uh, that heavy, but it's a big ass wooden crazy coffin there, and it's uh, the real. You're like, well, I'm holding a body. Yeah, it's that's pretty exciting. Cooking. It's pretty fun. A dead yeah. body. And, and you feel like, hey, you know you know, when you're at a party and uh, you're DJing or you're dealing drinks, you feel like, you need me here. I'm important. Yeah, you're of service. Thank you. You roll our old bones on over here. Yes, nervous in the service. So uh, then we have a big little thing together. We, we meet and hang out and all the family high fives. We take your photos. I hang out with my brother. His kids are there. They're fun. That's fun. The daughter really likes me, which feels good. She's like seven. Your niece. The niece. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, which feels. I got her on my back. I got her in a headlock. Or where um, there was a big pot of jambalaya, and I I picked her up, and, was, and she was like, "No, Uncle Mark, you know it's great." Oh, that's fun. Yeah, but you don't want to have a kid. But certainly uh, not. So get out of there. Go straight to Oklahoma City. Great gig. Leave there. Go straight to Sacramento, I believe. No, Addison. I don't know. I've been everywhere. Was there an Oklahoma City bombing? Mm, yes. There for a few minutes, I didn't do great. Okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, nice people, and everybody wants to hang out. I did a podcast, good times. Listen up to the pod we did in the backstage called Boys. Hmm. I guess it's uh, no women. <laughs> I don't know. That's the name of the podcast? Boys. With a Z? Nope. Okay. If it was a Z, I might not have done it. Well, it's tough to Google that podcast. Yeah. You should work on the title. I guess so. You know podcast comes from iPod? Oh, that makes sense. Makes sense. I just learned that today. Well, yeah, pod. Yeah. Hmm. But, if, you know, where else would pod be from? We're not sitting in a pod. Right. We're not eating pea pods. Porta potty. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, I guess so. So, yeah, uh, so those weekends sold out, then I went straight to Addison, half full. It's me and Fat Chris Al. We had a great time. Great club, Addison Improv. Uh-huh. Have you been there? I've never been there. It's great. It's like they got good history there. It's in, like, the suburbs of uh, Dallas. Uh-huh. And uh, great club. Now, here's the clinker. This is when it gets to a story. Clink it up. One, Tony Hinchcliffe's in town. He's like, hey, I'm at Hyenas. You want to do Kill Tony, which is just so fun. You know, you're like, I'm in the city. He's in another part of the city. He's sold out. You rush over. You get to be funny, and you leave. Tony Hinch, clink. Were you yes. there when the fucking Jeremiah got kicked in the head? Were you at that one? Yes. Oh, my God. How'd you know about that? It's all over the internet. It looked fucking horrifying. I felt horrible. He kicked a guy in the head, I think. I thought he got kicked. No, Jeremiah got kicked in the head. Oh, he had you know a thing what? on a, a water ball on his head, and some guy was going to kick it off, and he like boots him in the head. That's right. That it was, looked horrific. That was the episode before mine. So on my episode, he kicked a kid in the head, like a little payback. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, it's a whole circus over there. It's a ain't, lot of fun. Ain't that a kick in the head? Yes. Uh, so we go back, and I go to the open mic. At okay. the Dallas Improv or the Addison Improv, and that was fun. Like there's young kids around doing good things. Uh, this guy Arun, he's funny. We gave him some guest sets. He drove me around all weekend. Funny guy, great guy. He's got a great open mic where you give feedback. And I was like, Ooh. "Fuck it, I'll do it." I, that's what I said. And then you do it, and it's pretty helpful. I got I got a joke working because of that feedback, Mike. Well, that's nice. So all right, Arun. Then we all had lunch. That's what's great about comedy. He's like, I'm hanging out with these comics who are you know open micing. I'm the headliner, but you, you go out to the diner, you're just all comics. You're just cutting cutting wise and shitting on each other and shooting, squirting and jizzing. Mm -hmm. So then here's the clinker. Chris Another Allen, clinker. Chris Allen couldn't do the Sunday show because something got moved around. So it was my fault, but he left on Sunday. So we needed a host. They're going to okay. let the host feature, but now we need a host. So I was like, oh, well, let this guy Arun do it. He's running the mic. He's been doing guest sets all week. And they go... Oh, we're going to have this girl host. And I was like, okay, well, who is she? I look over, they point to her. That's her. She's waiting tables. Weird. I've never seen this in all my comedic days. Really? The waitress is waiting tables, and she has to go, hang on, go on stage for 10 minutes, tell jokes. She's wearing the uniform. She's got, like, 
you know, jizz marks on her vest and, you know, like uh, potato grease and all that. And then she tells jokes, goes back to, well, you had the Diet Coke, right? It was insane. I got to say, I've seen that a couple times in my day. Oh, wow. More often, it's a doorman ah. or a doorwoman. Ah, doorman. But I've seen yeah. it happen a couple times where it's like the weight stuff. But usually they let them change. Did she get to change? No change. Didn't put a jacket on? No change. Oh, man. I would have asked for a jacket. Yeah, hope and change. But it was it was very kooky. I, I came out of the green room like, what the fuck? It felt very uh, nickel and dime here. Amateur like, hour, yeah. Yes, yes. Well, and also I feel for this young lady who's got to do, I mean, hopefully she did well. She but did well. It sucks if you go up there and eat a bag of cheese and then you got to walk up oh, and be like, can I get you more wings? That's true. And they're like, we want a different waitress. <laughs> You blow. <laughs> I mean, I can't imagine you can do anything political or anything like that. Because what oh. if you do a bad joke? Your tip is going to go down. I never thought about that. You're going to get yeah. a 2% tip because you did a joke about, Abortion. you know, yeah, Trump's nipples or whatever. Right, right. Yeah, that's a good Well, her act was pretty neutral. You okay, know? well, it was. it's got to be funny, I, I hope. It was funny. She was funny. I wish I could think it was Britney something. But uh, it was. I, I. Damn, that's tough. I felt for her. I was like, "You're a, you're a trooper, sister. You, you're you're slinging chicken fingers, and then you're slinging yucks." Because I remember gigs. There's like, uh, you know, Ray from uh, Ray Ellen. No, what's, Parker Jr. What's Ray's name from uh, from Astoria? He works at Caroline's. Coots, Coots, Goots, Goots. God, I fucking spaced on his name. Ray Goots. Ray Goots. What used to be the door guy at Caroline's. He's a comic, and he would. Oh, do a yeah. set occasionally, but, but he would run in. Suit. He would run in the back and take the suit off, yes. put his T-shirt yes, on, real exactly. quick, yes. and then go back in the suit. It was almost like Superman, right? Right, Superman. Oh fuck! I'm gonna kill myself. Uh-huh. Anyways, he'd go and chant. At least you get a fresh shirt. But a lot of times, this shows like you might remember me from seating you. Usually, it's the guy seating yes. somebody. Yes, Aaron Haber. Yes, yes, he was a guy. He, he had a top the hat. And, uh, the boy. waitress was so different because she's got the. The uniform on, and and she just puts the tray down to walk on the stage. The whole thing's very yeah, good, bad optics. Well, Allie, that girl Allie from the comedy store, she's a waitress at the store and a comic. Very funny. Oh, that's Rogan's right. Rogan's pal. Yeah, yeah. What the hell's her last Mikofsky? name? Mikofsky? It's a mix something. Something, something Polish. Allie McBeal. Yes, there uh, is. Um, McDonald's? It's, is it, oh, is it, is it a Mick or is it I a Polish? I think it's a Mick. I it can't be Polish a and a Mick. You can't have a, a Polish Mick. That's no good. But you got the ski. So there's a Mick ski? I think there's a Mick and a ski. You can't have a Mick and a ski. That's I'm, crazy. I'm telling you, I Google it. Maybe Chilbo. did she combine names? I'll 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 pull it up or pull something. Pull it up because I, I, I want to get her name right. She's she's a funny comic. She's really funny and a sweet Mikofsky, girl. And Mikofsky. pretty friendly too. So I feel horrible that I'm she's fucking gonna up. kill me if uh, she hears this. Oh, uh, here it is. Makovsky. What did I say? I think you got it, but that's All not right. a Mick. It's a Mac. Oh, it's a Mac. Which, by the way, I still didn't know you could have a Mac and a ski. That's uh, like Scottish ski. Hey, welcome to the new world, baby. Makovsky. Yes. Well, that's a that's a good name. It sounds like a detective, doesn't it? Like Ooh. a grizzled old Makovsky. Get in here. Yes. You're not supposed to be shooting the guy. <laughs> right, right. He says a blinker. You shot another Negroid. Yeah. Come on. You're fired. You, you spent $8 million in taxes uh, shooting up that Toys R Us or whatever. By the way, I don't understand how she... She should be doing. Why is she still seating people at the store? Well, well, I'll email her. Yeah, yeah, I feel like she's killing it out there. Well, she's got the Rogan gigs, but you know that could dry up at any moment. I guess maybe so. she just doesn't work at the club, and I'm crazy. I've seen her go on. I mean, maybe she doesn't. She's not a waitress. No, maybe no, she, uh, she's something. I've seen her with the headset. And the yeah, apron. right. Yeah. Nah, I, we'll I figure it out. I think it's a door guy. I don't know. Those door guys. Dave Waits a door guy now. I mean, it's all, all topsy turvy over there. I don't know what's going on in that yeah, city, but this, you should all move here. Well, there's eight floors. There's 19 rooms, and there's 48 uh, comics waiting to go on. So I, it, I think Ari still checks IDs there. <laughs> Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, Allie, she's really funny. Uh, yeah. Allie McCoff, check, check her, her out uh, if you don't already. You probably do. She's got more followers than I have. Really? Nah, you not really, but they're step close. Step it up there, Mac and Ski. <laughs> All right, well, Makovsky, sorry that we it's a horrible radio forgot team. Mac your last and ski name, and I blew up your spot on the thing. All right, well, let me give you my nugget, because ah, I've been bombing. These stories are horrible. Oh, my God. i got to hang myself with the cord here. Oh, yeah. Well, uh... Me and a friend, my friend Matt Salakue, we go out. I know Salakue. Yeah, we go out and take some photos because we got to. People keep wanting to see the hog. Uh huh. So we took some pics of the hog. He's a professional photography. And uh, we go out to the Lower East Side. We're doing some snappies. And we stop to go, hey, let's, let's take a break. We'll have a cup of Joe. We sit down. We're having coffee on Broom Street. Okay. And uh, a cab pulls up. And out of it walks 
one Spike Lee. Whoa! Yes, New Orleans, New New York's own. Yes, Brooklyn's own. So he's walking into this black barber shop, and mm-hmm. uh, and I go, oh, that's cool. It's Spike Lee. You know, that's kind of fun. And the cabbie pulls over. Old black guy gets out, got a limp, you know, gray beard, you know, uh, oh, fun. diabetes. That gray beard looks nice on a on a black man, yeah. doesn't it? Because the the like Dick Gregory is right. sitting, just like oh, corn Cornwall West or Frederick Douglass, Cornell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's distinguished. Ah, distinguished gentleman. Yes. So he walks into the store, and he's he's a little man, Spike. Oh yeah, little guy, stalactite. So like He's a Mike, little overrated, too. Hey, hey. So uh, he walks in. We go, oh, that's fun, Spike Lee. And the cabbie comes out, older black guy, a little disheveled looking, didn't look great. And he goes, sir, sir. He's like walking up to the to the uh, the barbershop. So I was, we were like, oh, he probably realized who it was and wants a pick or something. Because the guy looked a little out of it. He looked a little scuffy. And he, he's banging on the glass. It's all glass out there. He goes, sir, your card was declined. So what? me and my friend go, how fucking great is this? We just saw Spike Lee. His car got declined. This is gold. Oh my god! So uh, he goes, "What?" He comes out of there. He's got the he's got the smock on. You know, he comes out. He's like, he looks like a judge. He comes out of there. He's like, "What the fuck? What are you talking about? That shouldn't be a decline. What are you crazy?" And the guy's like, "I'm so sorry. I'm just saying it was declined." So he slide. It was the van cab. He slides that door open, and I go, "Spike, you need some cash?" Wow. Which was so fun to say. And he goes, "Ah, he does one of these. Ah, he's a grumpy guy." Sure. Or he hates honkies. I don't know. Either way, he wasn't he wasn't pleased. And then he pays the bill and he's signing the thing. And he's all he's all annoyed. And my friend Matt goes, "How about a photo?" And he goes, "Ah!" And he goes back in. It was wow. a great moment. Great New York moment. That's amazing. Yeah, I felt like we we beat him. We were on top of Spike. Ah, uh, it's nice to be on top of a Spike. Yeah, I guess depending on what you're into. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that was it. That was fun. I love it. That's a that's a classic. I love a good celebrity sighting. It's always so exciting. But I, I rarely interact. Yeah, yeah, I don't really either. But it was such a perfect. I felt like a New Yorker. Like I was like a construction worker. Like, hey, you, hey, you artist. Hey, yes. you filmmaker. You need a fucking dollar. Yeah, you cat called him a little bit. I or, cash called him. I like it. Uh huh. Cash cab. Well, that's cash fun. Cab. Should have used cash. I had a weird moment the other day, speaking of Cash Cab, where Ben, they're shooting it in the village. Uh-huh. And I saw Ben Bailey, comedian. Mm, big Ben. And he was like getting into the production van. I was like, and I was just walking by. I was leaving the cellar. And I was like, hey, Ben. And he was just like, ah, oh, thank you. And he did like a thing. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, we know each other. Right. But like right. he probably gets recognized all day. Yeah. It's a weird feeling to have that thing of like, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> and I was like, oh. No, I'm And somebody. then I'm the guy that's like, no, it's Joe. Ah. And they right. could see the people being like, oh, he's trying to. Yeah. Because I've been great. like out with celebrities before, where someone's like, "You remember me? I I cut your hair once in the '70s." Yeah, and, and they're like, like uh, "No, don't touch get me. out of here." Calling the police. Well, anyways, that's a hell of a tale. So I've been hogging. So you you hog? No hog. Uh, art hog. Whales. Hog. Um, wild hogs. You ever watch that film? Uh, on a plane. Robbed at the Oscars. <laughs> you watched that on a plane? <laughs> well, I thought Uh-oh. it was going down. <laughs> Oh, that movie's appalling. Yeah, <laughs> it was rough. By the way, uh, I know we talked about it off air. You haven't seen it yet, but Joker, that's a hell of a picture. Dynasty, almost saw it Sunday. That's a hell of a picture. I went and saw it. Uh, I've seen it twice now. I saw it in Seattle, and there was like seven armed guards with machine guns Get outside because out they're afraid that you know someone's going to kill somebody. Wow, isn't that something? Yeah, it was exciting, but uh, hell of a picture. Then I went and saw Judy the next day with Renee Zellweger, and that's a snooze fest. Oh, really? But uh, what is that like a drama bullshit? It's a <laughs> is it like an art house kind of? It's a uh, Judy Garland who I love. Oh. I'm a big homosexual man. I, I had a period in my life where I was way. I mean, I literally had my period. I was so into uh, Judy Garland. What? I didn't. This is a, a dark, dark moment. I didn't know about. Oh, I love her. You made me love you. Bang, clang, clang goes the trolley. <laughs> I love Judy. I mean, I got a lot of gay things. I mean, Singing in the Rain, Judy Garland, uh, Elton John, Brandy Carlisle, men that are naked. Sure. I love a lot of things. Well, that, the guy uh, in the, the sauna we heard about. Well, you know what it is? I'm just, uh, I'm at one with my sexuality. Sure. And I like I like the arts. I like a good dance like and a painting too. and a singing. And I, uh, I, I'm with you on the musicals. I just didn't know you were a Judy Garland fanatic. I'm not a fanatic. Well, well a fan is a fanatic, I guess. I guess so, but fanatic sounds so much worse. It really does. It's weird. Yeah. I'm a fan of that guy. I'm a fanatic. Right. It sounds but like you're ill. Fan is just short and fanatic. 
It is, but it sounds stalkery, I guess. For some, maybe we should shorten stalker to. St- I'm a star. Well, don't get me started on stalker Channing. Oh, her I love. Grease. R I Z Z O. She was about 38 in high school in that movie. Sure was. But anyways, uh, the movie, the film is. Uh, it's okay. It's whatever. But uh, that's neither here nor there. I don't think I talked about the See Here Now festival. Did I talk about that Wait, this year? I think you did. The what, music festival. What, where was that? Jersey Shore. Yeah, you talked about. That. I talked about the whole With thing. The Reaper. Reaper. White Reaper? No, that's a different thing. Oh. White Reaper wasn't there. That Jersey Shore was that was that was months ago. Oh, all right. I can't remember if I talked about uh, Maybe I'm thinking of London. You saw a rock show in London. I went to a rock show in London. I don't think I talked about See Here all Now right. Festival. Well, say here now. Well, I went there last year. I'm gonna go again next year. It's a hell of a festival down Asbury Park. I'll brush through in case I talked I, about it already. I feel like you might have, because I'm I could picture the the Asbury while you were describing. But I it. also went last year. So maybe ah, I'll talk about last year's there it's you all go. mixed in mag. But if I tell the same story again, these people are gonna hate well, me. Give us a, a jizz. By the way, I read the YouTube comments. Some of them already hate me. Oh, I gotta yeah, well, stop looking at these comments. People are Tough, tough one, pills. One guy sent a nice comment about my diet, though. You're right. Some guy, I, I, sent, I sent it to you. This guy's like, you got to stop eating waffles. I'm concerned about your gut health. Yeah. And they, he got through to me. Yeah. This one guy, I was like, oh, you're right. He's like, we lose too many men this way. Start eating healthy. And so I'm changing my diet back again. Oh, wow. All kinds of reflux problems. Well, if, you take a, if you eat a waffle in front of me, I'm taking a photo. Please. I want you to say, don't eat All a right, waffle. Sarah's like, what am I supposed to do? Tell you not to eat a, wa- a waffle? I'm like, yes. That doesn't work. You're, that would you're help a, me. You're a, I don't want to say stubborn, but you, you do what you want. I'm stubborn, but if someone was like, put down the fucking waffle, you piece of shit. Oh, my dentist is calling me. Look Ooh, at this. Ooh, you hate to hear that. That's weird. Yeah, what is that? I mean, what is, well, it can't be that bad. He's probably like, hey, just check it in. Well, I think I have to have another root canal next uh, week. I went to the dentist last week. i got to have another root canal now. It's my fourth root canal. What? You're a sadist. It's horrible. You I mean, I really want to fucking just shoot myself right in the neck. you got a lot of range. You're addicted to waffles, tea, and root canals. I know. It's a whole thing. Well, I think I made a, an error by not seeing a dentist for 10 years and drinking four Cokes a day and a bottle of rum sure, a night sure. for 10 years. So <laughs> That'll do it. <clears throat> but anyways, I went to the music festival. I won't get too into it. Maybe I talked about it already. I feel like you did, but give, give me a jizz just so I know. Fuck I can, me. I, can I think I talked about it. Spit it out if, it, if I've heard it. I can't remember. <laughs> Fuck. Right, I on. feel like I'm blowing it here. Come on. You're doing great. Brooke Hold on one second. Waffle. I got I to gotta look See at the... The notes? The notes here. All right. All right there's Makovsky again. Not bad looking dame, huh? I had something. Who, Makovsky? Yeah. Oh, very attractive. Yeah, nice mug. How about this? Yeah. So I went to meet <laughs> I went to meet up with some old friends. Micah Sherman, you know ah, him? Ah, the Sherm. Past guest. Uh, Dan Hershon, ah, who, you Hirsch. know, who produced our video that we made on YouTube. Go check out our YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. We're he on shot it, right it. He edited it. I can yes. never say edited it. Yeah, edited it. Edit ed. Yeah, you're right. Edit Ed. Edit Ed. Edit Ed out. Anyways, Dan Hershey, he's a, he's a gay. He's like one of my oldest friends. He's a twos gay, and he's a hell of an editor. Is he married? Dan Hershon? Are you kidding me? No, not even close. Oh, all right. He feels like a married man to me. No, he's never even spoken to a woman. Ah, uh, he but, is a gay. But, um... No, I think he got close. He has a girlfriend. Oh, all right. Yeah. That's close. He feels like he'd be he'd date a girl for two weeks and pop the question. Well, he's a catch. He is. He's got secret pecs. Yes. He's very funny. He's sweet. He's, and, he's uh, a s- so strong silent. Yes. Silent majority. Uh-huh. Silent reflux. Silent re. Nixon. Silent movie. Uh, um... So, anyways, I got a I w- solid unit going. By the way, what do you mean, my that, cock? That's a decent. <laughs> no, that's not. There's nothing there. All right, but well, I got a decent piece. I got nothing here either. But there's no, there's no mound. Well, that's you got a, an almond joy over there. I'm all bunched up. By the way, <laughs> these pants. Look at these pants. Jeez. If I stand up, they look pretty good. Like they yeah. look like normal pants. They look like a normal pants. Sure. See, but if I sit down, you got the same thing going on. I you know. look like Huck Finn and yeah. I'm Tom Sizemore. Who's the other one? Sawyer. Tom Sawyer. <laughs> Diane. <laughs> Size more. He was a drug addict. Yeah, probably still is. Mm-hmm. I mean, he might be in recovery, but same he, thing. He fucked Liz Hurley, which I remember being. Blown you gotta away be kidding! By. Wow. Yeah, she's a she's an underrated skank. <laughs> Beautiful lady. I mean, boy. I mean, I you're carrying this up. I appreciate yeah, it. I'm dying over here. Just carrying most of the weight. 
So wait, you're at size more size. I don't know where I am doing? anymore. Uh, even... Oh, see here, anal. No, that I told already, or I skipped. Oh, you you oh, put right. a bit. You made me all sad about the see here now. <laughs> I what I started something else. Oh, I was meeting friends. Yes, friends. It's a TV show. I'm meeting Mike Kaplan, Dan yes. Hershon, Micah Sherman, a lot of sure. Sure, Cap Hirsch. Mike Hirsch, Sean, and Shane Moss. A lot of shins. Wow. Yeah, a lot of shushing. So the old Boston crew, and we've all gone our separate gays, but now we're, we're meeting up to go to some vegan place, which vegan is tough. Every time I go out to vegan with Kaplan, we'll meet up, we'll have lunch. It costs $48, and I leave starving. Oh, it's a bad combination for I gotta a restaurant. i got to talk to some of these vegans because I'm trying to eat healthier, but I every time I eat vegan food i'm more hungry when i leave well what are, what are we talking is it twigs nuts and berries what well, are we doing i here? ate a bowl of french fries because i'm like i gotta sustain here oh, but i had a smoothie and they carbs. have this like uh, i had a bowl of broccoli and rice it's like yeah. broccoli and rice and then you can get a fake you know chicken mcnugget or something uh, that's made out of shoes or whatever they like the fake meat yeah they need fake meat but uh, i appreciate i wish i was one but that's I neither here nor there. But anyways, I'm walking to meet him. I'm a block away. This is down by Union Square. And I'm standing, and I'm a cunt of a man. Everybody's doing something that bothers me. I, I really am a cunt. But everyone's doing the thing where you wait to cross the street. You're just standing in the road. Yes. Like eight feet off the sidewalk. Yes. And I'll say something. I'll go, you know, you're in the street. Wow, you like, say something. Oh, I say stuff. See something. I sure do. And so the cars are like coming by, and they're and the people on that side of the corner they're standing into the ah. street too. So now the cars, the cars have to go through a little person tunnel. Everyone's so right. there's like people stand. They leave exactly enough width for a car to get through. Right. And I'm like, well, you're saving no time at all mm. because as soon as the light changes, I'm walking. I'm three steps behind you. Right. You're gonna get if we walked 20 miles, you'd arrive one minute earlier than I am. Right. But anyway, so I hate the people. So finally, the cars all whiz through. Light turns red. Now we start walking. And there's a guy, an uh, Asian gentleman. He starts walking. And you just hear this. A guy on a bike. You just hear this. Heads up, heads up, heads up, heads up. Ding, 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 ding. He's got a bell. He's ringing it. But uh -huh. the, the bike guy has a red light. Oh. And the guy looks up. And kaboo! The Asian guy nails him. Whoa! Just wait. hammers the guy. Who's on what? Who the Asian guy's? Asian walking. guy's on foot. Okay. Another guy on a bike. The guy on the bike is now running a red light. Okay, got it. He's coming right through the red light. Now the people that were standing in the street, they've already passed because as soon as the light changes, they're zipping off. Sure. But this guy, he had just stepped out into the street. The bike guy, and now I'm like right in front of this. It happens like a foot in front of me. Wow. The bike guy comes screaming through. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. And he's ringing his little dumbbell, but he's got a red light. Yeah, hit the brakes, douche. Instead of hitting the brakes, he hit the Asian. Right. Nails the guy. Hit the brakes. And the guy just goes, whoa. It goes flying into the street. Like wow. he, I mean, he hit him good. Wow. And the Asian guy gets up and he's like, whoa, head hurt. <laughs> and, uh, the bike, that's a Seinfeld reference. Ah. Uh, uh, it Gillis. really hurt. Yeah. Uh, but hey, Ping. Yes. But anyways, the guy in the bike goes, <laughs> oh, oh. and I go, you just ran a red light. I was standing next to the bike guys right here because he stopped when he hit him. Was he I'm, off I'm face to face with the bike guy? He's was, on the bike. He's okay, so he wasn't hurt. He had a herky jerk, but he right. stayed on the bike. It's like you know, it's like a cat. Right. You're on your feet. Ah, Always landing on the sense. feet. That didn't make sense. Pussy. But I'm next to this cat, and I go, you just ran a red light. You hit a guy. And the guy goes, oh, no apology, no nothing, just speeds off. Whoa. Keeps going. Like, he's like, what the fuck? And I go, you're the asshole. It was fun. Oh, good for you. Yeah, but he biked off. And I, I should have used a little fucking jujitsu on him and kicked his ass, but uh, I'm not there yet. Was he uh, a messenger guy? Or what are we talking? What no, kind of bike? No, just City a douche. Bike? A regular bike. It's his bike. He's the bike guy. But I think people on bikes, people on bikes are out of control. They're in this disgruntled. City. And well, they're also uh, like bandits. They're just they weave in and right. out. They go the wrong way up a one way right, street. Right. But it was quite an episode. I mean, he nailed wow. it, and that Asian guy just like limped away, limped wow. away, and yeah. uh, he was all sore. And everyone just, but it's one of those classic New York things where everyone's going like, "What the fuck?" And then in the ten seconds, everyone's like, "All right," and yeah. then everyone just kind of zips off and takes off. But wow. Uh, Met up with those guys. Those guys are great. I got a voicemail from my dentist, which is really <laughs> off-putting. Well, tell us about the jujitsu, will you? Well, I got that story here. Oh, hold all right, on, hold all on. right. I got another thing, and then all right, all right. Uh, I go to be I got bed bugs in Hartford. That's a whole thing. I feel like I'm blowing this episode. Bed uh, huh? Wait, what? Bed bugs? I got bed bugs in Hartford. 
I go to Hartford. I go to the hotel. Wow. I wake up. I got a strip of ankle bites, 10 bites in a row on my ankle, just a full line, just like bed bugs. Yeah. I had to do the whole thing. I got to go down there. They, I, I got to move rooms. I go to third floor to the 10th floor. Wow. The guy's like, ah, we don't got no bed bugs here. Somebody complained about that before. We looked for it. There's no bed bugs. Oh, God. And I, I hate go, this place. all right, well, I got. The bite. I'm showing him the bite. I put my leg up on the counter. I go, can you see? I had. I didn't have these before. I have them now. And the guy's like, well, we'll look, but uh, <laughs> I don't think there's any bed bugs. We've searched before. Yeah. I go, all right, just give me a different room, pal. Just give me my bread. Yes. That was an old Gullman joke that no one ever saw. I don't know why I'm referencing it. Uh -huh. Anyways, went home. I, got the, I put everything in a bag. I had to put the bag in the dryer. I got uh, to vacuum yeah. out my bag. Yeah. And so far, no bugs, but... You got all this shit you got to deal with in comedy, and uh, this is then you get bed thing. bugs. Yeah, that's brutal. This ancillary BS. Goddamn nightmare, but all's good now. Then this is the last thing I got, and then I'll, I'll, I'll pass it off. Well, we're, we're suck my own dick. The anal. I'm on the airplane the other day. I don't know where I'm going. Uh, Seattle. Yes, big I'm flight. I'm sitting there, seven-hour flight. I go to use the restroom. A guy, The guy next to me, he comes out. So whenever the guy next to you goes, you always just go because you're yeah. like, well, I'm up anyways. Right. So I go. he goes. He comes out of the bathroom. I go in the bathroom. There's a turd sticking to the, you know, the little hole. Yes. How the, there's a, a thing that covers the hole, a little metal oh, thing. Oh, yeah, like a, like a flap. A, yeah, exactly. A flap. Yes, like a, a like, a, like a cat food tin. Right. And it opens up, but evidently his shit wasn't strong enough to open it all the way, <laughs> so his turd sticks to the flap. Oh, wow. So I go in there, and there's just turd stuck to the flap. Like, the flap is leaning down a little bit, but there's no density to his turd. Right. Weak turd. He must be a vegan. And so I'm like, I'm going to piss it through. I'm going to get a little piss. Yeah. I'll piss on the turd. Help it out. Piss on this fucking turd. Yeah. Reservoir dogs. So I'm pissing all over the turd. I can't get it down. So now I start to worry because I'm like, I'm going to walk out. The next person's going to think, that's my turn. Yeah, yeah. And now I don't want to be. And now what is it about being the guy that turded? I had a. Uh, I get it. I had a similar thing with a friend of mine yakking, and I had to clean up his yak because I he didn't, and then it was a guy after me. You don't want to be the yak guy. You don't want to be the turd guy. No, no. So now I'm going there, and then I'm like, should I touch it should i push it down no. but maybe i put a layer of uh gloves on there and stick it in tp glove i didn't do the tp glove i ended up being like ah fuck it so i hit flush it does a flood it does the but nothing happens wow i do a second flush it's still on i mean this shit was sticky and now you're the guy flushing eight times i know so now it looks like i'm coming out and sure enough i come out Beautiful oh, woman, come on. big tall. I swear to God, big tall lady with breasts and a vagina, and she's going in there. And I'm like, do I say it's not my turn? What do I do here? Right, right. So I just go as a thing, and she's like, what? And I'm like, ah, fuck. I go back, and then I sit down, and I'm now the whole time I'm just thinking, I'm like, it's not my turn. It's this guy's turn. Uh. And she walks by, and she's sitting diagonally behind me, and she's walking up the thing like a runway. She's like all tall and whatever. It comes right down the thing, and I'm like, ah, oh, I'm the turd guy now. I got my hood up over my eye. Like, she's not going to be able to see me. And for the rest of my life, all I'm thinking about is this lady thinks I'm the turd guy. You're the turd burglar. I've never shit on a plane before. And if I did shit on a plane, it would go right through the fucking you thing. You got that I right. I spinach smoothies, and I meditate. Yeah! You got a serious asshole power. This is the thing. I keep having reflux, and it's all about the digestive tract and your mother's ass. I'm taking, I don't know how it's, I'm still dealing with reflux because I take a shit longer than my leg. Right. Every shit I take is sticking out of the bowl and bright green, but <laughs> I can't, uh, I don't know, it's as wide as this bottle here. I mean, yeah. I take amazing shits daily. You could take a dick, a, a, it sounds like, with that gape power you got. I'd love to take a dick. Sure. All right. Witness. Email us. Yes, yeah, send in photos. I feel like I stunk it up in this episode, but it's nah. great to see you. I love you. I miss myself. I yeah. uh, hate myself. <laughs> Good miss to you. see you, too. All right. Well, you have anything else you want to add? We got uh, time. I got nowhere to be. Oh, all right. Well, shit. What does that say? The 57. All right, all right. We're I'll getting a little 57 special. Let me see here. Uh, anything else happened? Talked about ass in Oklahoma City. Uh, did Chessening, Michigan. That was fun. <laughs> Uh, cancer benefit. We sold out three shows, but I think there's nothing to do in that town. I want to thank Trent for putting the whole thing on. Hey, Trenty. This restaurant is so nice. These these small towns, you start to get it. 
Like the house I stayed in, a, it, I stayed in that Airbnb or that bed and breakfast I stayed in years ago, where they I couldn't find the Wi-Fi and I had to tiptoe around at night. I don't know if you remember that story. Ah, I remember. I think so. But yeah, it's just beautiful Airbnb, and you come down and there's free breakfast, and that some lady has cooked cinnamon buns, eggs, you know, toast, oatmeal is there, the whole thing, yogurt, whatever you want. And then you come down, and she, she's like, you need anything? You're like, no, you're just sitting in the kitchen eating. It's a beautiful thing. You get the small town. A B&B done nice is amazing. Oh, it's it's homey. It's warm. It's welcoming. There's a cling-cling on the, on the, on the, oh, on the cling, door. Oh, cling-cling is fun. Cling-cling, cling-cling. Well, here's the thing. You get, this is what's nice. You get the, the, the shitty place with bad breakfast. Yes. But it's the yin and the yang. Yeah, yeah, Andrew Yang. That's who got hit by the bike. You got the <laughs> shitty breakfast with no breakfast. You go to motel, what is this? But then on the other side, it's two sides of the same coin. Thank you. So, you, yeah, you, you're going to have some rough ones, but it's it makes the good ones so much better because you're like, oh, I'm getting rewarded for that shit I went through last week. And this is how crazy small towns are. And this might be some white priv as well. I think there's a lot of white privilege in our lives. So I show up, and I'm late. Flight's delayed, whatever. We finally get there. There's traffic. I get to the, the bed and breakfast, and I just go in a side door. It's not even the front door. Ooh. And then I walk in. I got a bag over my shoulder. It's dark out. It's cold. I got a hoodie up. I She just ruined a toilet. And I get in, and the lady goes, how you doing? Like, she was sitting in a chair, and I'm behind her, and it's dark. And, I'm, and I walk in, and you just hear the door close. She goes, how you doing? I'm like, I could have killed you. Ooh. You're just sitting there. With your back to me, but you trust me. I mean, I maybe if I was a giant uh, Nigerian man, it'd be a different story. I love the trust. I love the niceness. It feels like in smaller groups, everyone's nice and yes, friendly. Yes, yes. When you go to like a small town, I feel like anywhere in Wales, everyone's like, "Come on in. You have the right to roam. What's right. mine is yours." Right. But you exactly. get you get a bit. We got too many. We got not. I don't want to say too many people because then I sound like a fucking whatever. We got a lot of people here, so it's tough because with the big groups, you got like New York City. It's not as no. friendly, of course, if, as a small town. If that Asian guy got hit on Main Street in Chesapeake, Michigan. That would have been a headline. It'd be in the newspaper. Yes. Yeah, and the guy would have. The guy wouldn't even happen. He would have been stopping at the red light. That's a good point. Less of a hurry, less whatever. So yeah, just great time. Then you go to the restaurant. The restaurant's attached to the venue, and they whatever you want. And the guy gave me t-shirts of the place, and he's like, "Hey, he emailed me like, come back anytime. You made my family so happy. Like it's the sweetness that we've lost. Love a sweetness." Yeah. Everyone be sweet. Go out and do something sweet. Be sweet. Be kind. Stop commenting horrible things. You chooches. Oh, yeah. Some la- Last thing I'll say. I put up this video. It's doing really well. It's got a couple hundred thousand views on uh, Instagram there. And then some lady, some girl writes, not funny at all. Uh, I got no respect for these people, these negative comment right. people. I just hate it. She doesn't even follow me. You don't know me. Just watch something. I've talked about this many times. What happened to watching something and be like, I don't like that? Exactly. Why are you writing? It's my account. Right. Email a friend. Yes. Copy and paste it and send it to someone. Go, doesn't this suck? Right. Like, I'm like, ah, Judy wasn't great. I'm not emailing the director and being like, your movie sucks. <laughs> that's a good point. It didn't even suck, by the way. It was fine. It was just kind of boring. That's, the co- that's what Yelp is. We've trained people. You go on Yelp, you go on Amazon, one star, fuck this pillow. It sucked. You're like, what, what are you doing? I'm going to tell this person they suck. So I wrote back, and I, I don't, I'm not proud of this. I wrote back, you look fat. <laughs> And then she wrote back, I am fat. That doesn't make it okay that you posted a humorless video. Damn. And so I wrote wrote back, you're a mean person. And she's like, well, you can't take criticism without going to insults. Now, this is where I take issue. Now, why is yours is a criticism and mine's an insult? Yes. Maybe mine's a critique and yours is an insult. Uh Aha. But good for the goose. I hate these people. We've talked about this before. Don't hide the fact that you're an asshole. Right. And just go, well, I'm criticized. You're not a critic. You didn't go, well, this joke could use more of this. I don't like his delivery. Right. You're saying not funny at all. That's not a criticism. That's an insult. And you're shitty. Your instinct is to respond to a stranger trying to entertain. I'm going to write something mean to that person. Yes. Now, when I write back, you're fat. Now I'm the asshole. Now People start commenting, asshole. you're rude, you shouldn't do this. And I'm like, well, your, your instinct is to be mean. I'm yes. responding to you. I want you to feel what I'm feeling. Yes. And we kind of worked it out on the comic. I've since deleted oh, the comic because I don't want it to be a whole thing. But I wrote, I wrote back, well, you should... She's like, oh, so you don't think it's mean to body shame? And I was like, no, I think it is mean to body shame. I don't think people should do it. But I'm responding to your meanness. You started. You're being mean, so I want you to feel what it's like. You should stop being to yes. mean people. And then I wrote, and you should also eat some healthier foods, which was fun. 
good for you. And then she wrote, oh, something, something, fair enough. And I go, well, I feel like we've grown together. And she's like, we have. You're a nice person. You're, you're a positive person. See, that's what it comes. These people just want a connection. That's what it really comes down to. I suppose so. I regret doing it because it's the problem is everyone's like, well, let's see how you like it. But that's sometimes your instinct is to be like, how does this feel? Yeah, of course. And by the way, me being funny is subjective. It's got 15,000 likes. Right. It's on TV. Fat is uh, yeah, fat. There's a scale right there. But I, I'm not for fat shaming. I feel bad. I struggle with food myself. I'm lucky to have a high metabolism, <laughs> so I get it. I eat nothing but shit. I'm going to die young. My but teeth are rotting out. Can I, can I comment on the fact that we have a few things in our society? It's like cultural, and I know I'll wrap it up. Sure. But... We've all had the thing in the in the comedy club where the lady goes, "You suck," and you go, "Well, you're ugly," and everybody goes, "Damn!" I know, and you're like, "Wait, wait, no." But me calling her ugly is just as mean as her saying, I, "This is my whole life. This is my livelihood. This is my right. only talent." And you're saying I'm bad at it. Right. You can put on makeup. You can lose weight. You can hit the gym. You can put, get tit implants or whatever you want. You suck too at looking good. How about that? Yep. But. Maybe fat's better because you can lose weight. I guess if you're ugly, you're ugly. But well, my point is, the crowd will turn it. I had a girl once we we banged years ago. This when Tinder just came out, and she was like, "Your photo, you look like a serial killer." And I was like, "Oh shit!" Like bothered me. Okay. Because I don't want to look like a serial killer. No. And she's like, "Well, what'd you think of mine?" I said, "I thought you looked easy." <laughs> and she got pissed. Right. But isn't that weird? Because serial, you're saying I'm a murderer. Right. I'm saying you look like a slut. But we have the things in our society. Same with calling a woman fat, where it's like that's just. It's like the N-word. It's just, you can't, it's forbidden. Right. Well, I don't get those, because not funny is meaner than fat, A, because she came out of nowhere with it. Right. She didn't have to say it. You just responded. To her, to me, what she does is way meaner, but people go, hey, don't call a woman fat. Like, no, 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 no. Which one is it? Are we, are we, uh... Are we even here uh, sexually, men and women, or we do have differences? I, I don't know. The whole thing's confusing. It's very confusing, but I, fa I do feel bad. But I just like, she's like, well, you don't think that's mean? I'm like, oh, no, I, I do think yes, it's mean. Yes, But I just want you to say what you did is mean. Right. I'm being mean, right. but you're, you're acting like you're criticized, which that's what I'm saying is like, just say I'm being an asshole. Right. Yeah, I like being an asshole. Fuck you. I'm a right. troll or whatever. But just don't. Like, well, I'm just crit I'm criticizing. I'm critiquing. Get don't out of don't here. put it out. There. You can't take criticism. I'm like oh, I can take it. You don't think I'm fine? I don't care what you think. Right. I mean, I do care what you, you think, obviously. But I'll I'll be fine without you, with you thinking yes. I'm not funny. If you just don't tag, we talked about this when the Netflix thing came up. People tweet at you at Joe Liz. This sucks. You're not funny. Yeah. Just write that. I don't even care if you tweet it. Just don't put it at me. So I don't right. have to read it. Yeah, yeah. Tell but, everyone. But they want to hurt you, which entails their real meanness. Right. They want to, I don't know if entails is the right word, but they, they want to show like, this guy sucks and I want you to hear it because I am I want you to feel bad. That's why it's like, well, why do you want me to hurt? It's okay if I suck. Yes. But why do you want me to be feeling bad? I don't know. But That's I, the whole thing. I think it actually worked out because I think she did feel like, ah, oh, maybe I'm being me. Because I think with the internet, people feel removed from the thing. They write, oh, this yeah. sucks. This isn't funny. Oh, completely. But you're like, well, I'm reading. Why are you reaching out to me to say that? And I think me being like, I was hurtful, I was being mean in response to your being mean, right. you should be nicer. Yes. She was like, ah, shit, maybe you're right. So maybe yeah. they don't realize, or people think you're not reading it, they think it's just like, I think a lot of people think someone's running the account. Yeah, maybe. So yeah. I'm, a, I'm a sensitive uh, guy, I'm an emotional sensitive person, and I'm, I'm wounded from childhood, and we I'm trying, are, I'm working yeah. on myself. Most comics are. Now do you have, is it a joke about women? Was that in there at all? No, no. Okay, because sometimes like, that's a factor where that you you go, oh, my girlfriend's dumb, and they go, women go, this isn't funny, that's mean to women or whatever, and you're like, oh, you just don't like it's a woman joke. It can still be funny. Right. I sometimes like responding to these trolls, because it's like, why? I've talked to my therapist about this. I'm like, why am I letting these people just take shots? Like, people are like, I ah, just ignore it, just block them. It's but hard. I'm like, well, I don't, I want to go at it with them. Yeah, yeah, I get Fuck that. Fuck you. You're, you're fucking, you're nothing. You're useless. Yeah, where's your skill? You stink. I'm trying. I'm trying at least. But I'm and a you, sensitive cunt. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'm trying. I just want you to like us. That's all. I just want to be loved. We were talking about my friend and I were talking about that. All right, we got to stop. Sorry. My, I was hanging out with my nephew, my niece and nephew, and uh, I love them. They're fun. They're the best. And I was like, I, it, it puts you in the moment and you feel loved. And my friend was like, yeah, his son, he was like, he just wants to be fed and sleep and be loved. And I was like, me too. Uh, and it was like a fun moment. It's like it's not. That's not just children. We all want to be. That's a good point. We want food. We want to sleep. We want some shelter. We want some love. Yeah. 
And so these people that are writing, I should probably have a more Buddhist approach and be like, well, they're dealing with the thing and they don't, they're not getting one of those things. And right, right. So but they're lashing out. I shouldn't lash back out, but I'm sensitive. The difference is you can get your own food and you can get your own shelter. You can pay the rent. You can buy a Chipotle. But the love, you kind of got to earn it. I know. That's all we're trying to do is earn the love yeah. here. And then I, 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 everything becomes like, oh, that joke wasn't good. Everyone's going to hate exactly. me. Yeah, you get in your own head. And this is the problem with social media. I'm reading comments, and then I'm all... Yeah, yeah well, hard not to I'm read. All, I'm all... Uh, it's tough. It's tough out there. It's hard on a player or something. Player, don't hate the game, or it's hard out here being a pimp. What is it? I can't remember. It's hard. Living is pimp easy Chronicles. if life is hard. There you go. My dick's hard. Hey, this weekend, come see me, Springfield, Missouri. Ooh. You did that one yet? I'm waiting on you. I'm in December. Sam did it. He loved it, I think. Blue Room, best weekend ever. One show Friday, two show Saturday, three total. Love it. Uh, Springfield, Missouri. I don't know what it's even. I'm flying to Kansas City and renting a car. Ooh, weird. So if you're in Oklahoma or Kansas or Missouri or wherever the fuck you are, come on out. Blue Room, this weekend, I should get my book out. I got how a did, ton of dates coming up. How did Sam do it then? Because he can't drive a, or operate a, a motor vehicle. Well, you can fly to Springfield, but it was like $9,000 in oh, yeah, yeah. 12 hours. But anyways, so I'm there. And the next weekend, Burlington, Vermont. Come on out to that. Carl, I'll see you up there, I hope. If, that's a guy. If he doesn't come to a show in Vermont, it's time to quit comedy. Oh, yeah. Hopefully I'll see you, pal. Uh, baseball. So Burlington, Vermont, that weekend. And then November, I got DC Draft House, one of my favorite clubs in the world. Please come out to that one. Laugh Boston, November 29th and 30th. Hilarities uh, in Cleveland, December 5th through the 8th. Houston, December 21st. Secret Group, uh, Lafayette, December 20th. This is all off the top of my head here. Nice. Got a bunch more. Uh, Des Moines, Funny Bone, Albany, Funny Bone. I'm going to put them up tonight on uh, ComedianJoeList.com. Here, here. What do you got? You got so many. Uh, well, first I want to say I'm making shirts. My own shirts. No more uh, merch pump. I'm going to bring shirts out to the people. It's just going to say comedy with an exclamation point. Great nice idea. and easy. So look out for a shirt. Get a shirt because they're going to go quick, I hope. Uh, this weekend, I am in Austin. Austin, oh. Texas. Cap City, one of the best club, best cities. Great time. Please come out. Let's sell out a couple shows at least. It's a big room. I know it. Austin Gaze, tell the gays. Then we're in Tacoma, Spokane, couple nights for Halloween. Then I'm doing the uh, DC Improv on November 6th. It's Whoa. a Wednesday. Just, just a one-nighter. See big how that dog. goes. And then... Uh, I don't want to take your, but Portland. I'm also at the Blue Room. Portland Helium. Uh, Tampa's coming up. Atlanta's coming up. Hotlanta. Yeah, and uh, I know I just forgot something big, but uh, yeah, those should. November uh, 11th. Oh, Live yes. Pod. Get that out there. Village Underground here in New York City. Greenwich Village. Always a hot show. And they sell that show out. So get tickets early get November tickets. 11th. Oh, Rooster Teeth Feathers in Sunnyvale and Acme in Minneapolis. Love those. And then I think we're Santa gonna be Anna. doing a live pa oh Santa Ana in December. Santa Ana. That's gonna be big. We're calling it I'm calling it. I don't know if it's catching on, but the Tuesdays festival. Yes. And speaking of festivals, I believe we're gonna be doing two Texas festivals. Skank oh, Fest. Oh and Moon. And Moon Tower. Is that confirmed? I'd say I'm in. That's next year. Austin in April, whenever Moon Tower will both be at Moon. Maybe that's not announced yet. Maybe we shouldn't be oh. putting that out there. Well, well, whatever. Well, maybe we'll be at Moon Tower in April, and then Skank Fest, March 27th to the 29th. Yes. Are we doing a pod at that one, too? You got that right. I can't even remember. We're doing yeah. an Austin pod. Yes. But no, Skank Fest, are we doing it, too? Oh, I think we are. But that's Houston. I think we are. Houston, yeah. yes. Houston, Austin, live pods, and maybe we'll try to get out to L.A. early next year. Oh, yeah. For a pod, because people are hankering, so... Yeah, and go subscribe to the uh, YouTube. Thanks yes. again for fucking. This is the longest episode ever. We just set a record. We did that. Uh, we did the tenth hour. Now we're I think we're past eleven even. So thank you and <laughs> tell a friend. Go to Birch Pump. The shirts are selling like hot jizz. And uh, <laughs> also, I'm in St. Louis. I forgot to say, and La Jolla, outside of San Diego. All right, we gotta go. Is By the way, the dentist they're changing my appointment. I'm getting to push the root canal back. They're oh. canceling. All right, that's well, pretty good. You should charge them. Great news. Yeah, I wish. All right. Well, thanks, folks. Sorry, this uh, this was a toppy turvy roller coaster. That was a crazy a episode. I kind of had a breakdown at the end. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm struggling. Uh, great, great life. Good to see you. Bye. Bye. Bye.